And the easiest thing for a politician to do is to appeal to our hatred and our bigotry and our fear. The Democratic Party has become the party of war. It's become the party of censorship. It's become the party of pharmaceutical companies, of the neocons, this very aggressive, belligerent foreign policy, that forever wars, and this really bizarre turning our backs on the American middle class, which is the only thing that sustains democracy. If you don't have a middle class, any political scholar or political scientists will tell you if you have large aggregations of wealth at the top and widespread poverty below that that formulation is too unstable to support democracy the middle class has just been wiped out in this country and nobody's talking about it and i think that's why trump was so popular he was the one guy who's talking to those people and they're angry because nobody's listening to him and trump said i'm listening to you and i'm going to go break things for you and they are angry and they want things to get broken and there's going to be a revolution. Either it can be owned by Donald Trump or we can try to marshal and mobilize that energy for a more idealistic vision of our country. Every nation, like every individual, has a darker side and a lighter side. And the easiest thing for a politician to do is to appeal to our hatred and our bigotry and our fear. And that every once in a while, politicians like my dad come along who have a different approach, which is to persuade people people one way or another to transcend their narrow self-interest and see themselves as part of a community, as part of a larger adventure, and be willing to take risks for neighbors who don't look like them because they feel like they're part of something important, part of maybe reconstructing our country and making it live up to its promises, and to avoid the seduction of the notion that we can advance ourselves as a people by leaving our poor brothers and sisters behind. My father was able to do something that made people find the hero in themselves. I would like to be able to do that for this country, and I think it's the only way that we're going to save this country if people can find a way to unify people from the left and the right and to build the kind of populist movement that my father was able to build in 1968. Under crooked Joe Biden, there has been a catastrophic increase in shortages of essential medicines. Last year, new drug shortages were up by 30 percent, with 295 active drug shortages just by the end of 2022 alone. It's a mess. There is currently a shortage of at least 14 critical cancer drugs in the United States. They just can't get it. And every month of delay, cancer treatment increases the risk of death by at least 10 percent. It's unthinkable that this could be happening in the United States of America in 2023. It is truly unbelievable. We are becoming a third world country very rapidly between our open borders and our bad elections. We are third world. But even more dangerously, the top producer of critical medicines that we rely on in the United States is a place called China. China produces 95 percent of all ibuprofen, 91 percent of hydrocortisone, 70 percent of all Tylenol, and nearly half of all penicillin. Can you imagine that? This is not just a public health crisis. It's a national security crisis. As part of my plan to obtain total independence from China, we will phase in tariffs and import restrictions to bring back production of all essential medicines to the United States of America, where they belong. I signed an executive order to begin this process in 2020, but Biden has shamefully failed to follow through. He wants it ended. He wants to take care of China. This is a matter of tremendous urgency. American lives are on the line, and it will be one of my top priorities as president. It will also create countless new American jobs. Thank you. You come from American royalty, the Kennedy family. Why do you want to be president? What's your burning 
focus here. I did not spend my lifetime thinking about someday I'm going to run for president. You know, my campaign right now is about recalling America to the values of the Democratic Party, which are free speech, you know, a, a love for the Constitution, uh, protecting the environment, our, the Purple Mountains majesty for our children, protecting uh, that government has a role, role, protecting the rights of minorities and for uh, people who are underrepresented in the political process. Smaller government is, and, and more freedom is always better. You know, the word liberal means freedom. Mm -hmm. Women's right, bodily autonomy. This idea that democracy fosters human growth and human creativity. So a love of the arts, which is the highest aspiration of, uh, you know, of democracy. Mm -hmm. We need to learn to talk with each other, dispute, have conversation and discourse without hating each other. My uncle used to say that nobody really remembers the names of the generals in the Peloponnesian Wars and the, and the battles, but everybody remembers the, the poems of Aeschylus and the plays of Sophocles and the art and the sculpture and the, the architecture of ancient Greece, and that that really is the ultimate aspiration of a, of a democratic society to create things that are enduring and that elevate the human spirit. If you like this video and you want to help me become president of the United States, go to Kennedy24.com and donate now.